Hello. Hello. They, they just dropped my time from 25 minutes to 20. So, uh, yeah, I, I need to talk to you about stress and how to be unstressable. <laughs> A little stressful, I would say. Oh, now they're back to 25. Thank you. All right. Hallelujah. How, how beautiful is this place? How many of you have been to other Wahasus before? Oh, my God. We have a lot of new faces. All right. So for those who have been to new Wahasus before, the most critical question we're going to discuss today is, have I gained weight since last time? <laughs> so so you, you, are, you have one of two options. No, you look as handsome as ever. Or yes, fat hobbit. Which one? Well, <laughs> One, okay, very good, all right. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right, I, uh, I, I came to every Wahasu that ever uh, happened, including the one online when we were at, uh, at uh, COVID lockdown. And uh, at every one of them, I spoke to you about happiness. There was one where I spoke to, be, to you about artificial intelligence and scared all of you. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but the idea is uh, I thought I had the right to speak about happiness until... I met my co-author on the next book, which is called Unstressable, uh, Alice Law. I think Alice is here somewhere, but Alice? Okay, if you, if, there she is, yeah. Uh, so Alice uh, met me on her podcast. She hosted me on her podcast. And then she, uh, I hosted her on mine because of her Im incredible story. And she's sort of, if, if you know Alice, she's the sweetest, calmest person ever. But she has views that are very clear. And she said, how do you ha earn the right to talk about happiness when everyone is so stressed? Okay? And I was like, oh, interesting point. Someone else will talk about stress. Uh, and she said, no, we should probably write a book about stress. Oh, that's demanding. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and so I said, okay, let's just you know, write down a few ideas and let's discuss them. Uh, you know, thinking that she will come up with something that I say, mm, not me. And then I was completely taken by the idea. It definitely is my best work, at least in my personal view. Unstressable was, uh, we wrote it together. Alice is a very spiritual, very feminine, uh, very, uh, um, you know, energy-focused person. I'm an engineer, boring like hell. So I basically, yeah, I basically, you know, t the two of us together are writing something incredible. We got Unstressable ready around a year and a bit ago, but the publishing industry moves at the speed of a turtle. So we're only going to be publishing this end of this year. And for that, Alice, uh, being Unstressable, said we're going to start a membership that I will give you a one month free uh, gift of, of at the end of the, this conversation. Uh, to try and get a million people out of stress every year as of 2024, okay? So, thank you. So, it, is, uh, it sounds like a daunting task, believe it or not, I think we're really well set to do it, okay? So, we started the membership around um, November last year, very, very closed community, we didn't expand it at all, never advertised it, and basically now we're getting a lot of corporates around the world quite interested in it. You know, when you get into the corporate space, they start to really... We have a consumer platform and a corporate platform, and the comp corporate platform hopefully will get us to the million very quickly. Now, what is Unstressable about? We're going to have two sessions. One is I'm talking to you now for the remaining 22 minutes uh, to give you eight definitions that get you thinking about stress and how stress really works. And then Alice and I will have a breakout here in the theater at uh, 5.20 to talk about some practical tips and answer all of your questions. So, What's going to happen is uh, you need to understand that stress, as most people in the business world will tell you, is not a bad thing, right? Everyone who owns a business wants you to be stressed out of your head uh, because, you know, the more stressed you are, the more you'll perform. And so they tell you that stress is a wonderful thing. Now, in an interesting way, stress is a wonderful thing. And I think the most important definition to start with is what is stress? Now, Stress, uh, I'll explain first from a biological point of view, how, how the human machine works, okay? And the human machine is very straightforward. If there is a threat represented in front of me, a tiger shows up, right? Uh, my, uh, um, um, you know, let's say amygdala starts the whole idea, just catches up that there is a threat before I even think about it, you know, initiates a cocktail of hormones in my body, don't worry about what they are, but they eventually end up with the infamous cortisol, right? And once you have cortisol in your body, cortisol is literally like the turbocharger. Any car fans here? 
None? Oh my God. All right, guys, nice to meet you. All right, so, so, so basically you have those cars where you inject a lot of oxygen into the, into the engine and then basically that power of the car increases. That, that is cortisol. Cortisol tells your body, okay, uh, that you have a threat in front of you, so it reconfigures the machine, literally reconfigures the machine. Redirects calories to the right places, you know, stops uh, your digestive system, stops your kidneys, stops your uh, um, um, liver from doing their normal function, but dilates your, your uh, pupils so that you can see better, uh, gets you more focused, directs more uh, um, you know, glucose to your brain so that you can think faster, uh, sends a lot of your energy to your muscles so you can run away or fight the danger massively impressive when you think about it, right? Absolutely nothing wrong with that. If there is a, f a threat in front of you, this is the absolute best survival mechanism we have as humans, right? The problem is, in the, when people talk about stress, they talk about this stress cycle. It's the cycle that stresses you, right? They never talk about what is known as the negative feedback loop. And the negative feedback loop is basically quite interesting because you are stressed before you start thinking. Do you realize that? So if someone shows up behind you and says, boo, right? You don't think first if this is a tiger or a, a human, you just jump, right? You're stressed first because it is an emergency response. And then the negative feedback loop, basically, once cortisol is flooding your system, you start to uh, engage your prefrontal cortex, your, your rational brain, if you want, to assess if there is actually a reason to be stressed at all. And what happens is, most of the time, if there is no more tiger, your prefrontal cortex will make an executive decision, and the executive decision is, no more threat, calm down, right? And that's what you see gazelles and antelope doing in nature. Huh? The tiger is chasing them, and then they shake, and then they, they calm down, no more st stress. <clears throat> the problem with our modern world is that stresses are not in the form of tigers anymore. Right? So a tiger shows up, you, uh, you, your, your entire system screams, we're going to die. Your boss shows up, we're going to die. <laughs> your boyfriend says something annoying, we're going to die. Right? Uh, you didn't sit in the right seat uh, that you wanted to sit in the theater, we're going to die. Right? <laughs> and, and, and suddenly everything becomes a, 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 a constant uh, state of mental stress, where when your prefrontal cortex engages, it says, yeah, I'm still not in the right seat, we're gonna die, right? And so you still stress over and over and over, sometimes for years, sometimes for a lifetime, okay? The interesting thing about the feedback loop is that I, I, I hosted uh, Jill Balti taylor Anyone aware of Jill's work? Jill is an incredible neuroscientist who had a stroke that deactivated her left brain, and she wrote a book that's called the a Stroke of Insight, had a, one of the most incredible TED Talks in history, A Stroke of Insight, and basically spoke about what it is like to live in your right brain only, which was fascinating. I cry every time I hear it. And, and uh, <coughs> I hosted Jill on my podcast on Slow Mo, and Jill basically said that the entire system, she calls it the 90-second rules. Uh, the 90-second rule is from the minute you have cortisol in your blood, you get stressed, you, you respond or you don't, it doesn't matter, Within 90 seconds, all of the hormones are flushed out of your body. So you now have a chance to actually sit back and say, it's all okay. But then, because we re-engage stress every 90 seconds, your body basically says, no, more cortisol, we're still stressed. Right? So if you were to let the biological cycle take, take place, you would actually end your stress every 90 seconds. But some of us managed to renew that for 17 years. 90 seconds at a time. Do you understand that? It's one thought that happens in your head, and that one thought engages stress once again. Now, to me, when Alice and I discussed this, it, it started to become a problem, because it is very natural for all of us. Huh? Your, your partner says something uh, hurtful on Friday, you're stressed for six weeks, right? <coughs> so Alice decided to look at this from her approach, I decided, of course, when, you know, when things become tough, you tend to do more of what you know how to do best. So I ended up deciding to look at it mathematically. Okay? And I attempted to understand the math of, uh, or the physics, if you want, of stress. And it is very eye-opening. When you really think about it, it's very eye-opening. Because the, the, it is actually very straightforward to compare stress in humans to stress in physics. 
If you, if you remember in elementary school when they taught you that when you put pressure on an object, okay, there is force and then there is stress. And stress is different than force. Okay? Stress is, you know, as felt by an object, an inanimate object, is the amount of force applied to the object divided by the square area of the object. Right? If a camel uh, is walking on high heels in the desert, it will sink in the sand because not only because of its weight, but because that weight is distributed across a very uh, thin area. Okay? However, with the hoofs of the camel being this big, the camel doesn't sink in the sand because the force is distributed al across a very large area. Right? So in that case, stress in humans, if you take the analogy, is the challenge or the force applied to you divided by your abilities, skills, and resources to deal with that stress. And that's not actually very difficult to understand. For some of you, as you look back at your 20s, for example, you'd freak up out about things. Then when your teenage son or daughter freaks about now, you go like, come on, chill. It's easy, right? You, you, you gain the experience, and then you realize that you've gained skills, abilities, and resources, and you can deal with stress a lot better. Okay? From that equation, you understand that to deal with stress has very little to do with, it, with the external force, as a matter of fact. So if the external force is applied to you out of your control, what you can do is increase your abilities and skills and resources, and then you will feel less stressed. The challenge will be the same. It will be a challenging time, like the times we're going through now in business, for example, with economic crisis and geopolitical issues, but you will not feel stressed about it. You'll be carrying the same load and not stressed about it. So why do, why do we break then? You know, if we have an ability to carry stress before we break, the problem with stress, as I said, stress is a superhuman machine. It reconfigures your body in ways that are incredible, right? But we still break. And I uh, and Alice found out that we break under three conditions, okay? One, like in physics, you break, an object breaks when the load applied to the object is bigger than its ability to carry it, right? So you can do that in one of two ways in humans. Either keep adding stress, Okay? So your boyfriend says something annoying, and then your mother says something annoying, and then your best friend says something annoying, and, and, and. So the load keeps adding until there is a point where you no longer can carry the load and you break. That's one side. The other side is known as trauma. Okay? And trauma is that very unexpected, too fast, too soon, uh, too much kind of event. Hmm? So one morning you wake up and you find yourself in an accident, and it is a trauma. Right? And it's a trauma basically because that amount of force that's bigger than your ability was applied so quickly that it broke you. That's one way we break. I'll come back to that in a, in a, in a minute and tell you what happens after because it's quite inspiring. <coughs> the other way we break is what is known in physics as fatigue. If you've heard of fatigue. You know when, uh, when you get those plastic wrapped things and you don't have a pair of scissors so you start to twist them back and forth? Right? And if you do that 17 times, eventually, in material science, what ends up is the tensile forces between the molecules fade, and so you, it breaks. Very interesting, huh? So fatigue, without a lot of force, can break you. Okay? And that's exactly the biggest pandemic of stress in our world today. So trauma, believe it or not, is not that common. Alice is going to talk about that a lot in, in the breakout. Hmm? What is very common is burnout. Mm -hmm. And burnout is the result of fatigue. It's the result of applying a stress to you over and over and over and over and over until poof. You wake up one morning and you can't get out of bed. Now, fatigue in that case in humans will have an equation. We break out, we, break, we burn out mm -hmm. when the number of stressors multiplied by the intensity of stressors multiplied by the frequency of applying each of them multiplied by the time of application, is bigger than your ability. Okay? So it's, it's a, it, it could be simple, simple, simple stressors, like your alarm in the morning is very, very loud. Okay? But do that every morning, and then snooze it five times. Okay? And then there is one morning where you just wake up and you shout at your kids and everyone because you can't take it anymore. Right? It's the number of stressors multiplied by the intensity of each, multiplied by the... Uh, frequency of application multiplied by the time of applying each, right? So if you have a long commute, if the commute is one hour, 
it's more, st more stressful than if it's 20 minutes, correct? So that's the second way we break. The third way we break is actually not about breaking at all, it's about the process of getting to breaking, okay? Which I think, again, is very, very common in our modern world today. Our, uh, our way of breaking in the modern world today, uh, if, you, if, you, if you really recognize the people around you, we struggle with anxiety a lot more than we struggle with trauma a lot more, sorry, than we struggle with burnout a lot more than we struggle with trauma. Anxiety is a way of life, okay? It's actually quite staggering because I'm chill like a cucumber, right? Nothing can, like seriously, very few things make me anxious, but anxiety is so common, and I, I really had to study that. And to understand anxiety, we need to understand four definitions, which, are, which is what I call anxiety and all of its derivatives. Okay? Anxiety, fear, worry, and panic are all the same family, right? Let's talk about worry first. When you're worried, hmm, that means that you are suspecting there is a threat in the future, okay? You're, you're not, the threat doesn't happen, you don't even have a confirmation that the stress will happen, okay, or the threat will happen, but you're just like, sort of like, yeah, you know, it's an economic crisis, I'll probably be laid off, and when I'm laid off, I'll probably go hungry and I'll be homeless, and then someone will attack me in the street, right? <laughs> you, you know, I'm worried about that, okay? So, so no confirmation whatsoever. Nobody has ever told you that you're not doing that well or that the company is gonna lay off people, but you see Facebook doing it, you go like it's gonna happen to me too, right? So worry, if you feel worried, hmm, most of us, as a response to all four, worry, fear, uh, uh, anxiety, and panic, we respond by trying to resolve the thing we're afraid of, okay? When you're worried, you shouldn't do that at all, okay? When you're worried, what you should do is verify if there is a reason for you to be worried. So worry, the key word in worry is, I'm not sure, I'm just suspecting, I'm guessing, okay? So try to get yourself to one of two places, either, no, 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 what I'm guessing is wrong, there is no evidence of that, or get yourself to a place of fear, okay? Fear is the second layer higher, okay? Fear is, I am confident there is going to be a threat in my future. I am confident there is going to be a threat in the future is the time where you start to focus on you know, de-stressing by dealing with the, with the threat. So if you tell yourself, no, no, I'm confident, there seems to be very strong rumors that the company is gonna lay, out, lay, lay off 10,000 people and I'm probably gonna be one of them, that's when you have a confirmation that there is a reason to stress and the answer to that is, okay, if the threat is happening, what am I going to do about it? How can I find another job? How can I manage my finances better and so on? Now you need to deal with the threat. How about panic and anxiety? Very interesting when you understand the mechanics behind them. Panic is not at all related to the magnitude of the threat, at all. Panic is related to the time between now and the threat. When you panic, your brain is telling you the time between the threat and now is imminent. It's very short, okay? I don't think I have the time to deal with it. And so if you're feeling panicked, what do you need to do? Not deal with the threat, deal with time. And when you deal with time, what does that mean? It means I want to get myself more time, maybe by freeing myself up, or I want to speed myself up by maybe so soliciting help or you know, working faster or whatever. That's the answer to panic. It's not I want to deal with the threat, it is I want to deal with time differently. How about anxiety, the big one? Anxiety is the biggest one, okay? Anxiety is not related to the threat, it's not related to time, it's related to your ability to deal with it. When you're anxious, you're either guessing there is a threat in the future or aware, confident that there is a threat in the future, but you're telling yourself, and I'm not gonna be able to, to deal with it. I don't have the ability, skills, and resources to deal with it. And so what's the answer to that? The answer to that is very straightforward. Work on your skills and abilities. If you feel anxious, don't work on the stress. Don't work on the threat. Don't tell yourself, this is the way I can you know, avoid that uh, threat. Tell yourself, this is the way I can develop myself in ways so that I can deal with it and the anxiety will go away. And for most people I've worked with on the topic, when you tell them, okay, okay, it's confirmed that there is a threat, it's confirmed that you're not ready, what can you do to be ready? The anxiety goes away. They suddenly focus on what can I do to become ready for this? 
I'm not trying to hope that it's not going to happen. I'm trying to hope that when it happens, I'm going to be good enough to deal with it. Okay? So we've defined stress. We've defined uh, um, how, how we break under excessive load, trauma, or a lot of stress. We've defined anxiety, uh, fear, panic, and worry. Right? Uh, we need to now define what in physics is known as um, strain. Strain is less discussed. Strain is the, is the deformation of an object. If you stretch a rubber band and keep it stretched for a couple of days and let it go, it's bigger than when you started. The, the, the physical properties of that rubber band become different so that it can deal with more stretch in the future. Happens to us as humans, known as post-traumatic growth. Okay? So those for, of us who, who recover and heal after a trauma, or those of us who sway with the challenges, they don't resist and become rigid, okay? they become more flexible in their approach to life, and then they become chill as a cucumber. Right? As life comes to them, they go like, oh yeah, right? I, I knew that one is coming. Okay? And when you really see it that way, suddenly there is hope in stress. Not only that stress is a survival mechanism, but it's also the ultimate format for growth. Do you understand that? And one of the things that really, really annoy me when we talk in the spiritual circles about healing, okay, is that it makes healing feel like I'm broken. Don't have to be broken to heal, okay? I don't like the idea of assuming that I'm broken. I like the idea of assuming I'm challenged. And as I'm challenged, I'm going to grow. I'm going to learn. I'm going to become unstressable so that in the future when that challenge comes again, I don't feel bad about it. Okay, so believe it or not, I will finish on time because I have to give you one more topic and then uh, we, go, we will discuss more on the, on the breakout. So again, between Alice and I, beautiful, beautiful partnership, uh, we ended up saying, so how can we simplify all of this? Okay? How can we simplify a model that will work every time? Remember, unstressable is not about de-stressing you. It's about making you unstressable so that when future stresses happen, you're chill, okay? Which is a very serious lifestyle change, if you think about it. And we said there is a model that's called the three L's, which are limit, learn, and listen, okay? Limit, learn, and listen are quite interesting in terms of they deal with all forms of uh, stress. Uh, Alice in the breakout is gonna cover something we call a ton of stress, T-O-N-N, -N, all of the different types of stress. And for every one of those stresses, you can either limit, so basically reduce the stress, its intensity, its frequency, and its uh, uh, time of application, and so on, right? You can learn, develop your abilities and skills, and her most beautiful contribution to the book, or you can listen, okay? And the idea is that you, we are made up of four components, huh? a mind, a, a heart, a body, and a soul. That's every human. Hmm? And each of those gets stressed differently, and each of those is talking to us all the time. It's talking to us not only to say, hey, by the way, I'm stressed, okay? It's also talking to us to tell us exactly how to de-stress. It's telling us such clear messages, okay? And we don't listen. Or at least we listen, but we don't understand. Hmm? And if you can manage to listen to your mind, body, heart, and soul, most of the time the stress is so easy to, take, to, to go away, and it goes away early, and, you know, with early diagnosis. You don't have to wait until you break down and then deal with it. So the three L's as, as your accountabilities, as we call them, are something we're going to, to, to discuss in the breakout. Um, we, we want you to... The, the book is 400 pages, so 20 minutes doesn't work, okay? But, uh, but, and, and the 40 minutes of the breakout won't work. But in the breakout, we'll take you through a ton of stress, all of the different types of stress and how you can deal with them, and we'll take you through the realization of the number of nuisances that you allow in your life, or ends as we call them, okay, and how you can limit stress, right? After that, because we love Wohaso so much, and Karen, I, I haven't hugged you yet, uh, um, you know, we, we, we want to give everyone that month uh, in unstressable.com, so you go to unstressable.com, and you use the, uh, the uh, promo code uh, WOHASO2023, okay? Can you spell WOHASO? <laughs> yes, WOHASO2023, right? You get a month free. We have tons of content. We're now in the middle of mental stress. So you can watch as much of it as you want. If you want to stay 
with us. We, we have basically monthly webinars and so on. If you want to stay with us, welcome. If not, at least we will feel that we've given you enough to become unstressable if you spend a month watching the content that we have so far. Uh, with that, we thank you very much. I will see you at 5.20 in the data.